it's lovely to be able to be with you and to share with you about the Bible's big story from creation to new creation with particular relevance to this subject of plastic. And when I talk about a plastic theology, I don't mean a theology that is cheap and disposable. I mean a theology about plastics. We're all very familiar that plastics have become a huge problem to our environment, to human beings, and perhaps even more to biodiversity on land and in the oceans. And what I want to try and do, and this is very much a work in progress, is talk about the Bible's big story from creation to completion, creation to new creation, and to bring in how plastics relate at each of those main stages. And I'm using a framework here um, that I actually used in my doctorate, talking about the five great ways in which God intervenes in the Bible's big story. First in creation, making it all, and then through covenant, through the coming of Christ, through sending the spirit to start the church, and through what will happen when Jesus finally turns through creation, through completion. So let's look at those five one at a time. First of all, creation. And it's really important to say that plastics themselves aren't evil because they are made from creation. Most of the plastics we used are made from oil, which comes from uh, long dead living creatures that have decayed and have found their way into what we now use as fossil fuels. And plastics are a byproduct of that. Plastics by themselves are not intrinsically evil as in anything in God's creation. It's how we use them that is evil. And in particular, it's single use disposable plastics where the problem is, and I'll come back to that. But creation, we learn in the Bible, is all very good. The whole world that we live in, that we love, that we take care of, is a generous overflow of the love between the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our role as human beings within that good creation is to be guardians of it, to care for it for God's sake. So Genesis 1 talks about us as uniquely made in God's image in order that we might rule over, which means reflect God's character towards, in care for the beasts and the birds and the fish. And in Genesis 2, of course, we're told to go into the garden to tend and keep, serve and preserve it. So we're guardians of creation's goodness. And if plastics are being used in a way that damages that goodness, then it's our responsibility from Genesis onwards to do something about that. And that moves us very quickly to the fall, to when things began, begin to go so badly wrong in God's world. And in many ways, the pollution caused by plastics in our world today is one of the clearest pieces of evidence of sin, of the way we have selfishly misused the good gifts of God's creation through laziness, through carelessness and through greed. And all sin breaks relationships apart. Our relationship with God fundamentally, but also our relationship with each other and our relationship with the created world. And the misuse of plastics destroy relationships. They bring carcinogens into human society. They destroy natural ecosystems. We're told that by mid-century, there may be more plastics by weight in the world's ocean than fish. And plastics therefore become a symptom of our sin. They separate us from God when we use them carelessly and disposably. But the story of covenant is not a story of a world that God has abandoned. It's a story of the, a world that God revisits in both judgment and redemption, salvation. And covenant begins with the story of Noah in the Bible. It's the first biblical covenant. And who is it a covenant with? Not just with people, but with every living creature on the earth. And God's good purposes extend to the whole created order. My covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. And this shows God's compassion and care for every living creature. 
And so again, if our use of plastics is impinging on the health and the well-being of other living creatures and of biodiversity, then that damages our very relationship with God as well as with the world. And then we come to the third great intervention. When God sends his only son, Jesus, into our world. We've only time to touch briefly on some of the impact of Jesus, but I want to just dive straight in to one of the most familiar stories where Jesus feeds 5,000 plus with bread and fish. And at the end, he says to his disciples, gather up all the leftovers and let nothing be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. And that's how God has made this world in natural systems, in ecosystems without human industrial problems. Nothing is ever wasted. Everything gets recycled. Leaves fall off trees. And soil for new growth. When any animal dies, it returns to the soil and helps provide renewal for future generations of creatures. God has made an infinitely recyclable creation. And it's therefore possible to argue that anything we make that cannot be reused and recycled, that remains there forever in ecosystems, causing problems for them, is part of sin. It's part of our sinful world. And plastics are one of the biggest examples of that today because God loves to recycle. As some of you know, I wrote a book quite some years ago called God Doesn't Do Waste. And it's about not only how God in creation doesn't waste anything, but it's also about God's plans for taking what feels like rubbish, what feels like waste in our human relationships, our human societies, in messed up families, in broken apart churches, in societies that have gone wrong, and God loves to recycle. God loves to renew and redeem and recycle. And that brings us to the central work of Jesus in his work in the cross and resurrection. Because in Jesus, we have the one who is the source of creation. He's the one by whom all things were made. He's the sustainer of creation, the one in whom all things hold together. And he's the savior of creation. And so creation is not something that we can ever treat as disposable because Jesus is the one through whose death all things in heaven and on earth are to be reconciled to God. And therefore, anything that is completely disposable and cannot be renewed and recycled is not part of God's good plans for creation. And that certainly includes single use plastics. And then we come to the church. God's intervention on the day of Pentecost in taking a ragtag bunch of messed up people and saying, you are to be my body. Christ has gone back to heaven, but we are to be his hands and his feet, his body here on earth. And if Jesus is Lord of creation, the one who holds all things together, then the New Testament is very clear that the church is to be his body in practical ways here on earth. Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1, both talk about Christ's lordship over creation and Christ as the head of the body, the church, in the same breath. And the implication is that the church has a role in Christ's lordship in creation. And therefore creation care, including tackling plastics and the problems they cause, is part of the mission of the church. We read in Romans 8 that amazing verse that creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Who are the children of God? The church, the redeemed community. And if plastics are one of the biggest problems that we are causing in ecosystems today, then that's part of the mission of the church to address that. And why does all this matter? Because our final vision is that when Christ comes again, all things will be made new in Jesus Christ. All things will be renewed. There will be shalom peaceful, restored relationships throughout the created order. There will be the kingdom of God in its fullness, a kingdom that now we see signs of and we work and pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. And I would argue that phasing out unhelpful and certainly single use plastics is part of, a small part, but an important part 
of establishing the kingdom of God, of preparing the way for Christ's return. Only Christ can renew the whole creation. But our job, like those wise virgins who kept their lamps lit, our job is to prepare the way, to anticipate, be ready for the return of the bridegroom. Because when Christ comes again, God will restore everything and creation will be liberated, set free from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom that we share. So, in conclusion, we should live out hope for creation, including in our use and our phasing out of plastics. We should hear creation's cry of all those animals and birds, those insects and ecosystems that are damaged by our misuse of plastics. We should be open to learn from creation about how God makes everything renewable. We should, as churches, be leaders in a practical response through plastic free living. And finally, we should enjoy God's good creation as gift. My final slide, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. So that one day our big vision, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thank you.